Yeah, so today uh, we're going to be talking about uh, Influence Empire, Inside the Story of Tencent and China's Tech Ambition by Lulu Chen. Um, before we get into Tencent and the different topics of the book, uh, Karan, what did you think of the book itself? Like just enjoyment level, reading it, the way it was laid out. How, how did you like the book? It, it kind of left me wanting to dig deeper into each topic because it just kind of gives you a glimpse into okay this is what this is this is dd this is mate one this is tense and this is whatever this company and you know it keeps it's like a great book to get started and it'll keep you wanting more and it perfectly yeah. kind of outlines what we're going through now and what we've gone through in the recent past in the last two years from tencent to alibaba to all the chinese tech companies you know what's happened to them over the last two three years it outlines that really well. So, good book. Yeah, it was good. Very good book. I I, I thought it was very well written. Um, I think she's a reporter for Bloomberg, and you right. could tell that she's got great sources. That she's done a ton of reporting on all these uh, companies over this growth of the Chinese internet time period. Um, so it was like very good sourced and um, very good information. Uh, well written and uh, very enjoyable. And it read like a story, like there were just these different different parts to the story. And one of my biggest takeaways from the book is that it says everything you need to know about Tencent, that this book about Tencent was almost equally about other companies, uh, about Alibaba, mm -hmm. about Meituan, Didi, the video game companies. Um, and I just thought that was that was super interesting because that is kind of the story of where Tencent has evolved to, but a uh, good book. One of the only resources on Tencent, a uh, very timely book. It's recent. Uh, it's definitely, if you're interested in Chinese tech companies and in investing in China, Tencent capital allocation, how a company goes from nothing to be worth hundreds of billions of dollars. I'd say it's a very good book to pick up and read. So definitely recommend it uh, and, enjo and enjoyable. So, with that said, Quran, um, it's a question I ask myself every every morning when I wake up. What is Tencent? And I still don't feel like I have the answer, but maybe you do. Uh, what it is changes. Right? What is Tencent, it changes Quran? throughout. It yeah. keeps it keeps morphing into something different. Like I like this book also because it kind of shows you the history of Tencent, like how Ponima kind of started the company with a small group of people. And then like how he's kind of morphed it and changed it at each stage. Like it's gone from hyper growth to fast growth to maturity in a way, but there's still a lot of runway. Like it doesn't behave like your typical mature company. Like it doesn't behave like a mega, mega, you know, market cap company. So that's what to kind of define that. What is Tencent? It's a question that a lot of people are kind of still confused by. Yeah, and it's it's really? probably a question that Pony Ma doesn't want anyone to be able to define. Like he he right. I imagine him going, Well, if you can define what we are, then we're solid, then we're not growing, we're not evolving. And um that's what there is to like about them, that they, they do make bets, they do allocate capital uh in a smart way, making small bets, and then once those bets work, they they grow those bets and they evolve and grow over time company that it's you could say it's similar to in the world um this is not an original thought um i got this from from monish watching his lectures about tencent and around that time he was talking a lot about amazon and how those two companies stand out as the only two companies that can truly like really allocate capital in a great way i'm paraphrasing among the big tech companies and that's where where my mind goes it goes to amazon like a company that like is dominant in a field but is is relentless at trying to figure out the next thing and making a bunch of small bets and has it's different like teams Facebook, across Google, Amazon kind of put together in a certain way yeah I mean, Amazon, yeah it, it yeah. has aspects of all of them um I guess just to give an overview uh they have WeChat which the way I think about that is kind of like the operating system for the phone, kind of like iOS is for Apple phones, right. even though 
they're not ten cent phones. My understanding is is that it's a like an operating system. Everything is in, inside of it, or a lot is inside of it. So WeChat and then the local version in China. Um, video games. Um, they're they're the biggest video. Aren't aren't they the biggest video game company maker? They're seller everywhere in the, in the world. video game space. Yeah, the whole I mean world. The, the whole world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I like how the author actually put uh, WeChat like the title in the title. She kind of mentioned as the virtual uh, town square of China. So it's the place where everyone's at. It's kind of the app for all apps. It's the backbone of a lot of people's day to day routine. So. That that yeah. is WeChat, and the company behind that is Tencent. One point three billion uh, monthly active users for WeChat. Jeez. The United States of America has like three hundred fifty million people, so three to four times ish, three and a half times ish, uh, the amount of the American population uses uh, WeChat uh, on a monthly basis. They had the biggest uh, game company in the world by revenue, PC and mobile. Um, Mobile payments, we can't forget about that. Oh, yeah. uh, Tens WeChat of pay. pay, they say number one by monthly uh, active users. Uh, cloud company, growing cloud company and, and business services, um, and also content, which I, which they have. So that's kind. Of, oh, by the way, Karan, the investment portfolio, which all oh, right, of course, how can you is, forget yeah, that? <laughs> which is a huge, huge deal. So that kind of brings us to uh, the double bazookas, as Monish. The, yeah, the, the double bazookas. Before we get to that, I, I have a question for you because um, I think you proposed this book. Why, why did you want to read this book? Why is Tencent on your mind? Um, who would it be good for? It's it's so timely. Like again, the author. It's I think it goes up to like there are mentions of like in twenty twenty two we saw this. Yeah, it's so relevant to everything that we're kind of going through, and because we've kind of been invested in Chinese tech over these last two years. We've gone through it, you know. We know what having your investment fall like fifty percent feels like, right? So, yeah. um, why it's happening? What's moving the stock? What's fact? What factors are kind of affecting the underlying business? It's all mentioned in this book. At least briefly, they touch on all those relevant points. So, I think that's why like this book was such a good pick for the second episode of our book club. Yeah, Tencent is out there. Uh, I've been in it. I'm out of it right now, uh, but it's out there as a pit. It is a wonderful business, but it's potentially a wonderful business at a very good price potentially. And the question right. is, it's still, which we'll talk about maybe a little bit. Um, but the price has been beaten up, uh, and so it's just sitting out there. And to know if that investment could work out in a great way, you kind of have to know where the company's going.